Hi, today's topic is copyright duration, so I brought with me an authority to help us out. This is Dr. Elizabeth Townsendgard. So, duration can be complicated. Let's begin first with the idea that every work that's ever created is uh, protected for a certain period of time, and then it comes into the public domain, and you can use it any way you want. That's just kind of a basic idea. Um, so we're going to do part one. Part one of this is the, the boundaries. So anything that was first published before 1924, anywhere in the world, is in the public domain. Let's do that again. Before 1924, published, anywhere, public domain. The other side of that is anything that was published or created before, I mean after 1989, is under copyright. So um, that's like the very basics. And we'll talk to you more about the middle um, shortly. So this is part two. This is between 1924 and 1989. Okay. So a little bit more complicated. Um, hmm. So the first thing to do is look and see if there's a copyright notice on the thing you're looking at. If you see no copyright notice and it's published in the U.S., this is super important, just domestic, no copyright notice, it's in the public domain. So that's good. So no notice, public domain. Published in the U U.S., no public do uh, in the public domain. It gets a little bit more complicated from 1924 to 1963 and 1964 to 1977 and 1977 to 1989. I think that's for another video, um, but start, we'll start to teach you a little bit about that uh, shortly. So this is part three. This is 1924 to 1963. Okay. So again, only for works first published in the U.S. That means it does not include unpublished works, and it also doesn't include foreign works. So again, this is a little bit complicated, but if you really want to know the answer, here it is. So if a work was published, first published in the U.S. between 1924 and 1963, it had to have two things. One, it had to have proper notice, the little copyright C, the name, the date. So if you don't see that, it's in the public domain. And the second part is it had to have been renewed in its 28th year. So you have to look at the renewal records, check a record to see if it was renewed or not. That's a little complicated and you'd have to come, the easiest way is to come chat with us. Um, we have a special tool at our other company called the Durationator. I guess it's time to go. This is part four of Duration. I'm back with Elizabeth Townsend Guard. This is 1964 to 1977. We're totally back. <laughs> I haven't moved since the last video. Okay, so 1964 <laughs> to 1977. Again, it, you had to have proper notice on the work. So if, you, if it was published in the U.S. and it doesn't have proper notice, the little C or copyright, the name and the date, it is in the public domain. Now, if you find one of those, and it's 1964 to 1977, um, it's protected for 95 years from publication, so a really long time. But if no notice, no copyright, if there is notice, 95 years from first publication. Welcome back to part five. So this is 1978 to 19... To February 28, February 28. 1989. All right. All right, so here is the situation. <laughs> The law changed in 1978. It's a totally different law. It's weird. Um, but for domestic works, again, we're only looking at domestic work so far. It, if you didn't have proper notice, it's in the public domain. So again, look at, your, look at your magazines or the patterns that you have from 1978 to February 28th, 1989. If there's no proper notice, it's in the public domain. It has to be a U.S. publication, not a foreign publication. If it does have notice, it's protected for a really long time. Um, we'll talk more about that in another video. That's it. This is part six, so this is after 1989. All right, so starting March 1st, 1989, um, Congress passed a law that said you did not need to have notice in order to have protection on your works. So these are all works, foreign and domestic, uh, created or published, first published after March 1st, 1989. Um, and that then becomes sort of, they're all under copyright. So what's the term? The term is life of the author plus 70 years. Um, if it's for work for hire, which we can talk about in another video. Have you already talked about that? We have not. No. Um, we'll talk about what work for hire is shortly. But if it's work for hire or anonymous uh, work, it is 95 years from publication or 120 years from creation, whichever is shorter. So again, uh, this, these are for works... Uh, they don't have to have proper notice um, for these works. 
Welcome back to part seven. We're going to talk about unpublished works. Okay, so we have a, a strange split in unpublished works. So works that were first created before 1978 but were not published. So your grandmother's quilt that was uh, kept in an attic and never saw the light of day, um, unpublished work. Um, it's protected for the life of the author plus 70 years, but no shorter than December 31st, two, 2002 which means that like Abigail Adams quilts or Abigail Adams diaries that were never published were all protected till 220, uh, 20, 2002, even if she died longer than 70 years. There was a little caveat though. If the work was published between 1978 and 2002, it got protection till through 2047 or the life plus 70, whichever is longer. So it's a little bit complicated, but you can see that if it's an unpublished work, you need to call me and we'll talk about what the status is. It's a little more complicated. That's unpublished works. Welcome back. This is part eight, part two of unpublished works. Cool. All right. So let's say you create a work uh, during or after 1978. It does not require notice. You can even register it as an unpublished work. We can talk about that sometime about registering unpublished works. Um, and it's just regular stuff. Life plus 70 or 95 years from publication if it gets published, or 120 years from creation. No notice required, no citizenship required, it's all just protected. This is part nine, this is gonna be a topic on foreign works. It's gonna be awesome, a little complicated. So foreign works, we were pretty mean and naughty and didn't protect foreign works in the US uh, for a very long time. And then when we did, we were still awful to foreign works. So most foreign works were in the public domain until January 1st, 1996, when we restored them all. So if you have a work that was first published abroad, um, there's a lot of particulars and it's a little bit complicated. Um, so uh, foreign works are usually protected, I would say, if it was created after 1950, it is really likely that it's been, it is still under copyright in the U.S. And in that case, it's from 95 years from first publication. But if you really need this question answered, you can go to our other company, which is called The Durationator, and uh, we can help you there. Welcome back to part 10. We're going to talk about pre-72 sound recordings. Okay, so this is even more complicated. Um, I, I don't even know how to begin, but um, so musical compositions are protected under the Copyright Act and sound recordings are also protected, but they weren't protected until 1972 and then people got really weird about should we protect the old ones. And in 2018, we finally decided to determine the copyright status of these works um, as part of federal copyright law. And so if you're interested in this part of the law, again, contact the Durationator. We do a lot of work for people, um, and that's the company that, um, that, that ha you can, I don't know, there's a lot there. But, uh, but just be aware that the law changed in 2018 with pre-72 sound recordings.